Hi everybody, thank you for tuning in to another video on TK's Tech Corner. Today we are going to be once again testing out PlayStation Remote Play um, with the DualSense controller and seeing how it works on Android um, streaming PlayStation 5 uh, again with the DualSense controller. So um, for those of you that follow my channel, you may have seen a video that I posted uh, shortly after the PlayStation 5 was released last year where I tested on the old Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 that I had then, um, remote play uh, to see if I could use the DualSense controller, which was new then, um, with the PlayStation Remote Play app and effectively play PlayStation on, on my tablet. Um, it didn't work, um, and as it turns out, in November of 2021, um, with the release of Android 12.1, there was support added for the DualSense 5 controller or DualSense started, started supporting Android, whichever way around it was. Um, but the main point is, is I have tested it and it did work, but I've effectively unpaired my controller. So I wanna show you how to pair it as well. Um, is that since then, since the update, uh, new devices running Android 12.1 or if you're upgrading to Android 12, uh, 12 or 12.1, it should support using the DualSense controller with a remote play app for you to be able to play PlayStation remotely. So we'll go ahead and test it out, see what the experience is like. Um, and yeah, in case you're wondering whether it works before you go through the hassle of testing it yourself, maybe you're gonna be watching this video um, or maybe you're just watching it for interest. So first things first, to pair the controller, you've got to get it into a pairing mode right now. I'm gonna go into the Bluetooth settings here. To get your uh, DualSense controller into pairing mode, you want to press this button here um, and then you want to press the PlayStation logo button there. So you hold this button and you hold this button and for a few seconds what you'll see is the blue lights around the uh, touchpad have started blinking. Now whilst they're blinking I should be able to go through to a new device at the bottom and hopefully um, a wireless game controller is going to come up um, as a device that I can uh, pair to. Um, I'm just going to hit scan again because it's probably uh, just missed it there. And wireless controller is there now. So I'm going to click on wireless controller um, and hopefully it's going to ask me if I want to pair. I'm going to say yes, obviously. And it's paired. So now what you can see there is I've got solid blue lights here and I've got the white indicator light there just under the trackpad. So that is now paired to my tablet. Now, just as with the um, uh, DualShock 4 controller, uh, the uh, touchpad here does work as a mouse uh, trackpad for the tablet and it's actually very very accurate now on the actual video you might see a slight latency I can assure you that from my experience of what I'm seeing here using this um, uh, touchpad effectively as a mouse there is a very very little latency in fact it's yeah, it, it's, it's not nice at all. This is like using a trackpad on a laptop and I'm able to navigate around um, and it also supports gestures as well. So you can see if I swipe up with two fingers, it's supporting gestures as well. And I can go left and right with two fingers as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this trackpad to launch the PlayStation Remote Play app. Clicking on the trackpad works again like a mouse click. Um, and you can see that there, my PlayStation 5 is paired with this app already. So I'm wanting to go ahead and click on that now. Um, I've just heard the PlayStation bleep, so it's turned on very, very quickly. Um, literally, as I press that button, within within a second, I heard the bleep. So the PlayStation is turning on. It's going to connect to this now. Um, and once it's connected, we should be good to test out some remote play. So as you can see it there, um, it's definitely connected. Uh, and I think the game that we'll be testing, so it's definitely working. As you can see, I'm able to navigate through the menu um, with this uh, DualSense controller. And I think the game that I'm gonna be testing out here is Gran Turismo. And the reason why is because it will give me an ability to see if Rumble's working, if the uh, adaptive triggers are working as well. And also with a game <clears throat> like Gran Turismo, I suppose many other games we could argue, it will give me just as, as good an idea of how this works is uh, latency is probably very important here, right? So if I'm racing and there's a lag, um, it's not gonna do me much good because I'm gonna be missing the corners, right? So um, I think a, a nice fast paced game like Gran Turismo um, and a little high speed race will give us an idea. Oh wow, that's throwback. Um, will give us a good idea of just how well remote play works. Um, and 
I'll let you know if I'm feeling the triggers, etc. as well. So, right. I haven't felt any rumble yet. I don't know if I... I think I should be feeling some feedback by now. I'm not feeling any rumble at all. So I don't know whether that's something that has to be enabled or disabled. I'm just going to click on settings there. And there is no option here to disable or enable rumble for force feedback. All it shows here is always show the controller. That would be the on-screen controller, which I'm not interested in. So um, let's progress. I'm going to go ahead and click on world circuits. Sound is working as well. I'll just go ahead and turn up the audio a little bit so you can hear that. Oh, that's definitely working. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and click on the Europe track. That might just be a bit too loud. I don't want it to drown out my audio. Um, let's go ahead and choose a track in Europe. Um, and let's go ahead and choose this. Let's do an arcade race so we can just race freely. Um, yeah, let's race in the afternoon and just whatever level doesn't matter. It's not the point of this video really, because if I'm trying to show you how good I am at Gran Turismo, it wouldn't be a very, very good video. Now, first thing I can confirm is there is definitely no uh, force feedback. And also, I'm not feeding, feeding anything on the adaptive triggers, so that's a bit of a letdown. Now, otherwise, Latency-wise, I'm not having an issue here, to be honest. I stacked it because I'm not so good at this, but latency-wise, it's uh, it's not something that's going to cause you an issue at all. So, as you can see here, I'm able to race this without any any issue. Now, I was concentrating on, on the force feedback and adaptive triggers earlier, and I just stacked it, right? But, um, as you can see here, the game looks great. Um, even even flying around this track and you can see I'm using a car that's quite fast so the screens are scenes are moving very very fast here right um, no issue with refresh or um, or any sort of like screen tearing or anything whatsoever at all I'm sure at some point if the wireless signal gets saturated or whatever um, it, will, it will start lagging a little bit right but I'll be honest so far first minute into this track the experience is great now I'm running on, uh, on on Wi-Fi obviously here. I think this connects through the internet, so this is not me directly connecting over the local network to the PlayStation. I think this ultimately does connect over the internet um, for remote play services. So if I was out of the house and at a friend's house, and um, you know I'm connected to the internet through the tablet, I would be able to fire up remote play. Or if I'm out and about and I turn the hotspot on on my phone um, and I've got a good signal, I'll be able to play. Though the reason why I mention that is at home on the internet, high speed internet connection, high speed wireless connection, I'm running Wi-Fi 6 here. Um, this is not going to cause me any issues. Uh, if you're out and about, obviously the experience might not be as good. The uh, screen resolution, the actual resolution of the streaming or the streaming quality would definitely be also be um, uh, reduced so as to get a somewhat usable gaming experience I suppose so it might not look as sharp as this looks um, but as it stands here um, I'm guessing I'm getting at least full HD screen stream if not more um, on the PlayStation obviously it's set to 4k oops there we go I missed that same corner again on on the um, on the PlayStation this is set to 4k um, but I don't think I, I should, I'll be getting a 4K stream here. I'll be honest, I've never researched into what quality the stream actually is. Um, but nonetheless, on a device, uh, I mean, this is not a small screen. This is a 14-inch screen, right? And, and it's still uh, very, very respectable. It looks awesome. It's like playing, like this a little TV hooked up to my PlayStation 5. <laughs> Um, like a little monitor, like a little wireless monitor that I'm playing on. That's 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 the best way to describe it at the moment. Albeit, again, there's no feedback. Adaptive triggers are completely dead. It's just like a normal trigger. Um, yeah, obviously the analog stuff's working. Like that. If that wasn't working, that'd be another problem altogether. Um, but there is no feedback, and there's no, you know, you're not getting that nice sensation of the adaptive triggers that you do when you play. Um, on the TV, on your couch, on a nice big screen. So, 
Uh, that said, I think that gives you a, an idea of um, how to pair the controller with your Android device. Uh, if you're wondering how to pair it, hopefully this has helped you out. And as to the quality of the stream, I think, yes, it's superb. This, to me, is working just as well as my uh, uh, Xbox Remote Play works as well, to be honest. I, I do play a lot um, on, uh, on, on the um, tablet. Um, because it's just easy sometimes to pick up and put down rather than getting comfortable on like, the TV because I don't have that much time. Um, for me it's a very very quick pick up and put down and I find myself doing that on the tablet at my desk more than anything else to be honest. And it's literally a few minutes here and there um, and this gives me the flexibility to do that. So there you go, on that note I'll probably end the video. Um, I'll just go back now to the home screen. As you can see the remote works absolutely fine. It's just like sitting in front of the TV. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. If you have, please leave a thumbs up. Any questions, please ask them in the comment section below. And if you haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner to support my channel. Looking forward to reaching 1000 subscribers soon. For me, that's going to be a personal milestone um, and hopefully many more subscribers and many more videos to come. So take care. Thanks for watching and all the best.